Hi, I'm James, and I'm going to be talking about my final year project, which involved designing a system to detect fraudulent IP geolocation. So, what is fraudulent IP geolocation? Well, IP addresses are allocated in blocks, and each block has a who is record, uh, which has a country code. But it's very easy to fake this country code, as we demonstrate here, uh, where we're changing the country code of this block of IP addresses to be in the Seychelles. And this is done on an online form, and there's no validation being done here. And we found that commercial geolocation services, such as MaxMind, will often trust the data in the Whois database, despite it not being validated. Who uses this technique? Well, we've noticed that cyber criminals and Torx and node hosts do this in order, we think, to avoid detection and prosecution. And we've also noticed VPN providers uh, do this in order to market services in countries they don't have a physical presence in. So this is one example of that. This is a VPN provider that advertises having servers in North Korea. This seems very unlikely, so let's have a look into it. So if we do a who is look up on the IP for this server, it does indeed say that it's in North Korea. KP is the country code for North Korea. If we ping this IP, then we get a, a shortest round trip time of about 44 milliseconds. If we think about how the internet works, um, data travels as packets in fiber optic cables, but um, fiber optic cables, data can only travel at around two thirds the speed of light. 44 milliseconds round trip time is about 22 milliseconds one way, which translates to about 4,400 kilometers. But North Korea is over 9,000 kilometers away from me, so there's no way that this server can be in North Korea. And we can scale this idea up and ping the target from multiple servers all over the world and then intersect the regions that each of them find. Constraint-based geolocation, instead of using uh, the speed of light, it learns the relationship between latency and distance uh, by collecting training data and then using linear regression to fit a line. Uh, this is an overview of the system that I've developed. It's a pipeline with multiple stages. Uh, the first stage is a local analysis stage where I collect information about the IP, such as the net block that's, that it's in, such as the parent of the net block that it's in. Then we have this fast response CBG stage, which is designed to quickly classify IPs that are obviously fake. If that isn't conclusive, we then move to another stage, which I'll explain in a bit. And finally, we have uh, a caliper stage, which involves trying to find a best guess at the location of the target. So the fast response CBG stage involves uh, pinging the target from servers that we have under our control across the world. These are digital ocean droplets and they're running ping code that I've written myself in order to be able to ping targets in parallel. But often this stage isn't conclusive because there aren't many servers being used. So for example, this could be the region determined by this stage and then the server could be in any of these countries here. So in this case, we need to use more measurements. And we use the RIPE Atlas network to do this, which consists of over 11,000 measurement servers. We choose uh, measurement servers to collect measurements from and then perform constraint-based geolocation again using their measurements. We were given 50 million credits to use. Uh, each ping me measurement costs credits in the system. That might sound like a lot, but we're planning on doing a lot of analysis here. So we needed to economize our use of measurements. So what we do is what I've called iterative constraint-based geolocation. We, if you imagine this is the region that the fastest one stage determined, we then select a small amount of monitors within this region, perform constraint-based geolocation, that refines the region, and then we again select more monitors, uh, because it isn't conclusive yet, it could be in France or Britain. And then after that, we can finally conclude that it must be in Britain and we can end the iterative constraint-based geolocation. The last stage is the caliper stage. And this involves getting a best guess at the location of the target using a geolocation algorithm that I've developed with global applicability in mind. Caliper is a statistical geolocation algorithm. Uh, it's based on posits, but I'm just going to quickly present the extensions that I've made. There's more details in the report. One of the extensions I've made is to use trace root hostname hints. So for example, this is uh, trace routing that North Korean server. You can see that the packets travel through a hop with Prague in its hostname. And 
we can use this to guess that the target must be around 11 milliseconds from Prague. I also use population geographical data, so um, it's more likely in my model that an, a server will be somewhere where there's a high population density. It's also very unlikely that it'll be somewhere in the ocean. And using these extensions, I've been able to outperform uh, both POSIT and CBG. How do users interface with the system? I've designed a web interface that users can submit IPs to. So you enter your IP in that box there, and then you get a result like this. So that shows the information from the local analysis stage there, and then also the region that's been determined, and the best guess from Caliper there. I've also got a batch processing feature where you submit a list of IPs, and it uh, returns results in a TSV. The pipeline itself is written in Python because it's got good support for statistical computing and for spherical geometry with the Shapely library. Um, the pinging code running on the servers that we've got around the world is uh, written in Go. Uh, it supports pinging and trace routing in parallel, IPv4, IPv6, ICMP and TCP. Uh, the web interface is a Flask app which is quite nice because it inter interacts quite nicely with the Python pipeline. Uh, the geolocation is done asynchronously by salary workers. So onto the results from this system. The first set of IPs we looked at were uh, all web servers claiming to be in these countries here. And we found a lot of incorrect geolocation here. So the worst country was uh, the Virgin Islands where 98.1% of web servers that were responsive to ping measurements were using incorrect geolocation. And this is the real location of one of the blocks claiming to be in the Seychelles. It was, in fact, probably located in Stockholm. We also looked at uh, web servers that are in small net blocks. Uh, because of the way that internet routing works, if two IPs are in the same slash 24, they should be in the same physical location. So if we've got uh, many small net blocks in the same slash 24 with different country codes, as we do in this example, um, that's a red flag. So we've looked at 100,000 IPs of this kind and we found that 76.3% of them that were responsive um, were using incorrect geolocation. We found that China was the most targeted country here. Uh, we're not quite sure why, it could be search engine optimization, it could be avoidance of the Great Firewall. We also looked at every Tor node as of June 2020, that was about 6,000 IPs. We found 6.7% of them using incorrect geolocation among exit relays, that was 9.3%, uh, probably because they want to avoid detection. VPN providers, we examined six VPN providers. We examined all of their servers. Um, overall, 27.7% incorrect geolocation, which is quite significant. Um, Hydemouse had incorrect geolocation targeting 180 different country codes. And that North Korean server from earlier was actually located uh, here, uh, near to Prague. We also examined some really unlikely country codes, such as Bouvet Island, which is a very remote island, um, uninhabited, but you can still set it as your country code. We found 188 web servers using this country code, and we were able to prove that 186 of them using incorrect geolocation. So in summary, we examined over 111,000 IPs, we found over 60,000 using incorrect geolocation, and we found 225 of the 249 possible country codes being used incorrectly, as shown in this heat map. Um, the future of this system, uh, this has been an industrial project with Netcraft, and the system is going to be uh, used by Netcraft in production, so I'm now working full-time on that.